Just Theater Company production of Rivers. Yay! <laughs> Before we begin, we have a few small announcements. There will be one 15 minute intermission wherein you will be able to visit our snack bar and partake in food and drink to support our department. Please rem remember that the recording of any kind of this production is prohibited by law. <laughs> he said recording of any kind of this production is prohibited by law. At this time, we ask that you turn off all cell phones and pagers, watches, or anything that may beep, vibrate, or flash in the dark. Finally, we ask that you take a moment to unwrap any lozenge or heart candy you might have to keep you from coughing during the performance. And now, sit back, relax, and, and enjoy the show! Uh, goodbye. 
goodbye. Don't you ever do that to me again. He must suspect something. I didn't get his name right once. If anyone calls again, don't answer. And why did you tell me to answer that one? Because I thought the bull went for his head, not his earlobe. Thanks, Mandel Vodka. I love Charlie standing in the shower. If he drowns, you're making that call. I don't know why we're always the first ones here. Never came late once in our lives. Someone else could have dealt with all of this. by German women in Munich. And now it looks like a war memorial. Oh, hello? Is this Dr. Dudley? Dr. Dudley? Yes, it is. I have a whiplash injury. I see. Do you know what theater he's in? God, I need a cigarette so badly. Could you? It's important. I'm at 914-473-2261. Uh, Thank you very much. I need to settle my stuff. Is there anything to eat? Some canapes or something? Gee, I don't see anything. No canapes. Where's the cook? My Lee. She makes great canapes. My Lee. I didn't see her. I think she's off this week. The week of their anniversary party? Her mother was sick. She had to go back to Japan. My Lee is Chinese. I know. Her mother was visiting Japan. I can only look up. I hope tall people are coming to this party. <laughs> Where's Ken? He's upstairs, and in where, the bathroom. Where's Charlie and Mira? They're still getting dressed. They're not ready? We had a car accident, we're on time. My lip is getting gigantic. I don't think I have enough lipstick to cover it. No nuts or pretzels? Oh, I didn't even have lunch today. Three damn odds with the IRS on an empty stomach. Oh, Claire, give me a Diet Coke from the fridge and something to munch on. Where are you going? To the John. I haven't had the chance to do that either. There's a guest powder room down here. Isn't Ken using that one? Uh, no, he's in the guest bathroom upstairs. Why didn't he use this one? I don't know. He said he had to go badly and he just ran up the stairs. If he had to go so bad, this one is closer. You know how it is when you have to go badly. You don't want to stop running. But this is a 
shorter run. Lenny, it's not an Olympic event. Why don't you just go? That's why they build gas bathrooms. If Dr. Dudley calls, I'll be right out. Claire, we have to talk. What is it? I'm coming apart at the seams. Your dress? No, my nerves. I think I'm going to crack. I can see your hands are like ice. Something is going on here, isn't it? Oh, God, you're so smart. You're so quick to see things. You're scaring me, Chris. Tell me what's happening. Well, all right. Ken and I arrived here about 10 minutes ago, and as we were getting out of our car, we suddenly heard this enormous... Hey, Claire, you're lovely. Yes. I was just telling her that. She looks enormously... Well, doesn't she? Isn't that the dress you wore for cerebral palsy? No, I got this one for sickle cell. <laughs> Hi, Ken. Where's Lenny? In the bathroom. Where's Charlie and Mira? Still getting dressed? Yes, still getting dressed. How's the new BMW? Is Len happy with it? Delirious. Did he get the new features he asked for? More than he asked for. Great. Uh, are you done in the bathroom, Ken? I have to go myself. I think Mira's in there! Then I'll use my lady's bathroom. Call me she gets back to the pan. Up here, quick! Hurry up! <laughs> what did you tell him? I can't remember. You can't remember? I was talking so fast I couldn't follow it. Why can't we just tell them the truth they are going to find out anyway? I don't know the truth yet. Charlie's still mumbling. Now get in there. He wants to see you. See me? Why does he want to see me? He's crying like a baby. I can't stop him. He needs a woman. To do what? To cry on. I can reason with him, but I can't comfort him. Just let him cry on your shoulder for two minutes, for Christ's sakes. I paid $1,200 for this Oh, hi, Len! Oh, Jesus! Hi, Ken. Oh, did you hear about the BMW? Yeah, congratulations. Excuse me. Where are you going? <laughs> to the John. Didn't you just go? Yes, but not enough. Here <laughs> This is very weird. Well, give me the pretzels. There's plenty of food in the kitchen, but nothing's cooked. Why don't you open this first? There's duck, roast ham, smoked turkey, all the pasta on the table. There's pasta sitting in a pot with no water. Ah. <laughs> Everything's ready to go, but no one's here to start it. Doesn't that seem strange to you? <laughs> Not as strange as him peeing twice in a row. Have you got something a sharp? A uh, nail file or something? Chris started to tell me something, and then she claimed up. <sighs> the door of my BMW opened like tissue paper, but this thing is like steel. Her hands are still ice. She could have looked me straight in the eye. I thought this would be a safe place to keep your jewelry. <laughs> Damn it! What's taking them so long to address? What's that about, huh? You so damn suspicious, for Give the people a chance to come down, huh? Oh, you don't notice anything is wrong? Sure I noticed. I noticed that the towels are piled up on the sink and not on the rack. I noticed that there's only a sheet and a half left on the toilet paper. I think it's sloppy, but not a scandal. I'm so sure I grew out a scandal. You think I don't know what you're talking about? I hear what's going on. I hear gossip. I hear rumors. And I won't listen to that crap, you understand? He is my friend. She is the wife of my friend. Okay, then fine. Forget it. I don't listen to filthy garbage about my friends. I said forget it. All right, come here. What's wrong with here? I can hear us there. Here is better. <laughs> Will you come here? Not good. What's not good? What I heard. What did you hear? Would you keep your voice down? Why? We haven't said anything yet. There's talk going around about. Stand on my other side. I can't turn. <laughs> There's talk going around about Mira and Charlie, only no one will tell it to my face because they know I won't listen. I'll listen. Tell it to my face. Jeez, why would you want to hear things about our best friends? He is my best client. He trusts me. Not just with. Investments and taxes, but personal things. I don't do with taxes. What's the rumors? Jesus, you won't be satisfied until you hear, will you? I won't even sleep with you until I hear. What's the rumors? <laughs> All right. Your friend Mira upstairs is having herself a little thing, okay? What kind of thing? Jeez, do I have to spell it out for you? A thing, a man, a guy, a fella, a kid, an affair. She's doing something with someone on the sly somewhere, and it's not with Charlie. You don't know that. You've only heard it. You haven't seen it. Of course I haven't seen it. You think they invite me to come along? What is wrong with you? <laughs> you are so naive, it's incredible. Get real, buddy. Mira's not having anything with anybody, your friend. Charlie, however, is running up an LMO hotel bill. Charlie? My friend Charlie? No way. Not a chance. He wouldn't even look at an 
another woman. He may not be looking at her, but he's screwing her. <gasps> Will you keep your voice down? Where did you hear this? Someone at the club told me. Our tennis club? What is it? A sacred temple? People gossip there. Jesus, bunch of hypocrites. Sit around in their brand new Nikes and Reeboks, destroying people's lives. <laughs> Who told you this? I'm not going to tell you because you don't like this person anyways. What does it matter if I like them or not? Who told you? Carol Newman. Carol Newman! <laughs> oh, I knew it. I knew it. I hate that damn woman. She's got a mouth big enough to swallow a can of tennis balls. How are you two doing? Hey, just fine, Dad. Have any tea yet? Just a plastic bag. Great, be right back. Wasn't it Carol Newman who spread that other rumor? What other rumor? The one that you and I were breaking up. No, Carol Newman didn't start that. She didn't? Then who was it? It was me. You started the <laughs> rumor? <laughs> me, you, the both of us, and we were thinking about separating. Didn't we go around telling everyone? We told friends. That bitch told strangers. Hey! Hey, do not call Carol Newman a bitch to my face. And besides, it wasn't Carol Newman to start the rumor about Charlie. Someone else at the club told her. Who told her? Harold Green. Harold Green? Who the hell is Harold Green? He's a new member. We voted him last week. I never voted for him. Yes, he did, by proxy. We were in Bermuda. I don't believe it. This proxy new member spreads rumors about my best friend. Who does he play tennis with? He doesn't play tennis. He's a social member. He just eats lunches there. Jesus! This bastard is a proxy social new member who just eats lunches and spreads rumors? What does he do for a living? He sells BMWs. Does anyone else get <laughs> Not to mention them, though. No. Well, is anything wrong? Why? Does anything seem wrong to you? You mean aside from the fact that there's no food, no guests, no hopes, no hostess, and that you and Chris only appear one at a time and never together? Yes, I'd say something was wrong. Okay. Okay. Okay, sit down. Clang. Claire! All right. I can't keep this quiet anymore. We've got a big problem on our hands. Aha! What did I just say, Claire? You said aha! <laughs> what is it, Ken? Tell us. Charlie. Charlie's been shot. What? Shot? Oh my God! It's so strange! He's not dead. He's all right. He's not dead? He's all right? He's alive. He's okay. <laughs> Where is he shot? In the head. The head? Oh my god, he was shot in the head? Sit down, take it easy. It's a superficial wound. Well, where did the bullet go? Through his left earlobe. The earlobes? My holes in my earlobe, doesn't it? <laughs> I saw this coming, I swear. The truth, Ken. Did she do it? Who? Mira, for Christ's sakes, who else would it be? Why would Mira shoot Charlie? You don't know what's going on. You haven't heard? No, what's going on? Charlie's been having a hot affair with someone. It's not hot. You don't know if it's hot. Nobody said it was hot. <laughs> it's an affair. A plain affair. Who told you this? Nobody told me that. What I heard was that Mira was having a thing. A thing with who? Aw oh, man, a guy, a fella, a kid. Who knows? Someone else told me it was Charlie who was the one having the affair. What, someone else? Some bitch at the club named Carol Newman. She is not a bitch. She only told me what Harold Green told her. Who's Harold Green? A rat bastard proxy social member who deceased lunches and spreads rumors. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems to me Charlie's the one who's having the affair. If Mira was hysterical enough to shoot him in the head. Listen to me, will you please? Mira didn't shoot Charlie. Charlie fired the gun. He tried to kill himself. It was attempted suicide. Suicide? <laughs> no, no, Charlie! No! Stop it, it's enough dreaming. He's all right. Oh, Charlie. That's it. Harold Green's out of the club. I can get the votes. Hey, can we stick to the main topic here? Nobody knows if anybody had an affair. I don't know why Charlie shot himself. So how's Mira taking this? My God, she must be a wreck. I should go up to her. Let me go up to her. Don't go up to her. There's no point in going up to her. She's not here. She's gone. She's gone? Charlie shoots himself in the face and Mira leaves the house? She walks out of him now. Now he's lying up there with a bullet in his ear. It's not in his ear. It went through his ear. Will you listen to me, please? <laughs> Maybe. Mira wasn't even here when Charlie fired the gun. Chris and I were pulling up when we heard the gunshots. The front door was locked. I ran around back and broke in through the kitchen window. Oh, I saw that. I thought maybe my Lee did it and then Mira fired her, but I didn't know then that my Lee's mother was sick in Japan. <laughs> Don't talk for a while. Just listen. <laughs> you let Ken and I talk. So, you 
broke through the window. What, was he lying on the floor? No, he was sitting up in bed. The television was on. With those evangelist shows? A bottle of Valium was on the night table. He was half conscious. I figured he took a couple pills to make himself drowsy, put the gun to his head, started to fall asleep, and then shot himself through the earlobe. Is that blood on your shirt, Ken? Where? Below the second step. Oh shit, I didn't see that. That won't come out, will it? That's what you're worried about. A stain on your dress shirt. I don't give a damn about my shirt. I'm trying to prevent Charlie from getting a suicide rap. When the others walk in here, I don't have to explain to them how I got blood on my good silk shirt. Well, you could borrow one of Charlie's. These two sides are too big for me. I don't think anyone's going to notice your cuffs if Mira's not even at the party and Charlie has bandages over his ear. Jesus, let the man finish his story, will ya? So, did he say anything? Did he tell you why he did it? Not a word. He was barely conscious. Did he leave a note or anything? He had a crumpled piece of paper in his hand. I tried to take it from him, but he flew it into the jaw and he flushed it before I could get to it. This is not happening. I am not hearing this. Uh, have you called the police? No, just the doctor. We told him he tripped down the stairs and banged his head. As long as he wasn't hurting, we didn't want to make this thing public. We've got to call the police. This man is the deputy mayor of New York. We're talking front page on the New York Times. Pictures of Charlie with his suit jacket over his head. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to avoid until we find out what happened. If we keep this quiet, we're all accessories. I deal with the IRS, boys. I'd be the first one they'd go after. Why would they go after you? The suicides, they want to open up everything. His books, his portfolio, his entire financial picture. They want to know why a deputy mayor can afford a house this big. That's no secret. Mayor's a wealthy woman. She bought the house. She did. I didn't know this. Oh, you hear that? Now tomorrow it'll be all over the tennis club. Hey, I'm not bringing the police till I have to. I don't know what you're worried about. Unless you have something you don't want the IRS to know. Are you accusing me of hiding something? Maybe you're the one who has something to hide. You may not have his books, you may not have his will. Are you accusing me and Charlie of conspiracy to defraud the city? I hear a car coming up. If you're not calling the police, I am. Oh no, you're not. You're telling me what I'm not gonna do? I'm pulling up the driveway. <laughs> Maybe the neighbors have heard the gunshots and have already called the police. I'll deal with that problem when it arises. Maybe this car is the police. Then the problem has arisen. It's a Volvo station wagon. A Volvo? Now I suppose your words are sweet as police. It's Ernie and Cookie. <laughs> Ernie and Cookie? Why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you listen? Ken, Mira and I are having trouble with her zipper. No, you're not. I'm not. They know about it. About Mira's zipper? <laughs> we know that Mira's not here. Oh, they're stopping to look at our BMW. Did you tell them about Charlie cutting his ear shaving? I know about everything. The gunshot, the flush note, down the toilet, the arrow, of everything! Why didn't you tell me you told them? They must think I'm an idiot. How is Charlie? He's asleep. He's hugging the pillow with his thumb in his mouth. They're coming up to the door. I can't believe she's wearing a dress like that to a party like this. All right, so do we tell Ernie and Cookie? Why not? Ernie is Charlie's analyst. Everything you tell your analyst remains confidential. What does patience tell him? We're not as patient. As patient as I'm asleep upstairs sucking his thumb. I can't believe I'm paying a babysitter for this night. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we do? Do we tell them or not? I say no. Cookie has her cooking show on television. Suppose she accidentally says something on the air. On a cooking show? Do you think she gives out suicide recipes? <laughs> I still say we say nothing to it, find out what happened. Better safe than sorry. Claire, open the door. Chris, get us some drinks. Let's pretend like we're having fun. So what is it? We're telling Ernie, but we're not telling Cookie? We're not telling either one of them. I'm sorry we told you. <laughs> Just open the door! Claire, don't open until I get upstairs. Maybe if Charlie wakes up, I can find the story from him. Oh, I took the Valium away from him. I hid them in the medicine cabinet. Gee, what a good hiding place. So, Mrs. Thatcher replies, I don't know, perhaps I left it in my umbrella stand. Ha ha ha! Are we ready? Yes, we're ready, we're ready! Oh, God, this is 60 years old. It was my grandmother's dress. She 
brought it from Russia. Didn't you wear that for muscular dystrophy in June? No, emphysema in August. <laughs> what a pretty cushion. Is that for Charlie and Mira? No, it's for my back. It went out again while I was dressing. You all right, honey? I'm fine, babe. <laughs> Doing your back problems, it must be awful. Oh, it's nothing. I can do everything but sit down and get up. Hey, Lenny, is that your BMW out there? <laughs> It looks like you put a lot of miles on it in two days. <laughs> Some idiot shoots out of his garage and blindsides me. The car's got 12 miles on it and I've got a case of whiplash you would not believe. Oh, I've had whiplash. Excruciating. My best friend had it for six years. Whew. <laughs> oh, this looks nice. Who brought this? Oh my god! Did I break it? What was it? Stuben glass. Oh my god! Lenny, Claire, I'm so sorry! It was an accident, honey. We'll re replace it, of course. <laughs> sure, if you want, I don't care. How about a drink, everyone? I'd love something. What would you like? I'll get it. Sir. I'm right here at the bar. All three of you are going to get me a drink? Such friendly people. I'd love a bourbon, please. I should have let What's-Her-Name pick it up. Moo Lou! My Lee. Here you go, Ern. Where's Ken? Ken? Ken's with Charlie. And Mira? Mira's with Ken. They're waiting for her to get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? A spasm. It's all right. It's fine. It just shoots up my back and goes. You all right, poops? I'm fine, pops. <laughs> Listen, uh, maybe we should all go sit outside. It's such a beautiful evening. Okay. Okay, you kids, what's going on here? What do you mean? You think I don't notice everyone's acting funny? Three people want to go get me drinks. Chris wants me to hear this funny story. Lenny wants to get us all outside. Everyone's creating a diversion. Why? I don't know. Am I right? No wonder you're such a high-priced doctor. Okay, someone's going to have to tell them. Tell them who? About the surprise. What surprise? The surprise about the party. What surprise about the party? Well, I think it's just the cutest thing. Don't you think so, Claire? Oh, God, yes. Tell them about it. No, you can tell it better than I do. I'm sorry, I think I'm going to have to sit down. Oh, I'll help you. I'll do it. I got her. I need the cushion. Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> you all right, sugar? I'm fine, puppy. So, what's the big surprise about? <laughs> well, Charlie and Mira decided because because they were going to have their closest friends over to celebrate their 10th wedding anniversary, they weren't going to have any servants. Uh-huh. No, my lady, no, anybody. Uh-huh. Isn't that terrific? No help, just us. Why is that terrific? Because we're all gonna pitch in, like, like in the old days, before money, before success, like, like when we were all just starting out. Those were the best times of our lives, don't you think? N no, I hated those times. I love success. But, uh, <laughs> don't you feel that these are greedier times? Lazier, more selfish. No one wants to work anymore. I work 14 hours a day. I cook 37 meals a week. I cook for my family. I cook for my neighbors. I cook for my dogs. I was looking forward to a relaxed evening. But I don't want to spoil the fun. What do we have to do? We have to cook. You mean all of us cooking in the kitchen together? Everyone except Charlie and Mira. Claire and I told them to stay up there and relax. We'll get them when we're ready. What do we have to make? Oh, it's all laid out of the kitchen. Uh, smoked turkey, roasted ham, duck and pasta. Roast ham? Duck? That's too much cholesterol for me. Ernie, we did not come here to live longer just to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand why we're all wearing our best dress, our best clothes. 
It's not your best clothes. It's a 50-year-old Polish dress. It's a 60-year-old Russian dress. The dress is hardly an issue worth arguing about. I didn't say we wouldn't cook it. She didn't say we wouldn't cook it. Why is everyone getting so worked up about this? Okay, Ernie, let's not turn this into group therapy, please. This is nothing like group therapy, Claire. You of all people should know that. Oh, terrific! Let's just name all the people in your Thursday night group, Ernie, huh? Why are Ernie and I being so attacked? We just walked through the door! Would you please lower your voice, since you are going to spoil the surprise for Charlie and Mira? What surprise? It was their idea! Alright, listen, I don't want to take the blame for ruining this party. I'll do all the cooking myself, and Ernie will do the serving. Honey, no one's asking you to do that. Well, she's a professional chef. If it makes her happy, she can clean up too. <laughs> all right, it's settled. Just give me 45 minutes. It's going to be the best dinner party we've ever had. <sighs> what the hell was that? Oh, give me a break. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. Everything's under control. Oh, hi, Ernie. Hi, Cookie. Oh, Chris, honey, could you come up here just one second? <laughs> Me for a minute, please. I hate when this happens. <laughs> Am I crazy, or is that a gunshot? A gunshot? No, I think that was a car backfire. In Charlie's bedroom? Uh, why? Chris and Ken and Charlie and Mira are all up there. There are uh, more of them than of us. We well, just can't ignore a gunshot. Ernie, please go up and see. No, no, I know what it was. I know what it was. It was uh, a balloon. They've been blowing up party balloons up there all day. What kind of balloon was that? The Goodyear balloon? I'm going up. <laughs> then how are we supposed to get the dinner ready? Charlie and Mira must be starved. You and Cookie get started. I'll have a white wine spritzer, Ern. Claire, why don't you put on some music? I'll be right down. Let me know if Dr. Doolittle calls. I'll get it. I still think it sounds like a gunshot. Oh, ignore it, Ern. Just help me out. Hello? Who? Dr. Cusack. Yes, he is. Who is it, please? Is that for me? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It's a conference call. Mr. and Mrs. Klein, Mr. and Mrs. Platt, Mr. and Mrs. Fishley. Oh, it's my Friday night group. I have a telephone session with them. It's okay, honey. I can get up myself. He's coming, folks. Hello? No, my husband just called. Yes, I'll tell him. Who's on the phone? Dr. Dudley's service. <laughs> oh my god, what is that? Cookie, it's alright. I do this all the time. It takes the pressure off my back. <laughs> Where's Ernie? In there. He's got a Friday night session group. They're in the kitchen? No, on the telephone. <laughs> Back again? No! Little shark pins on the floor! <laughs> she must be such fun to live with. What happened upstairs? Is Charlie okay? He was sleeping. Ken wanted to hide the gun in Charlie's closet so he wouldn't find it. He tripped over some slippers and the gun went off next to his head. He can't hear a thing in both ears. <laughs> Ken, Charlie was out cold from the Valium. Oh, they already hung up. I told him I'd take a message. You couldn't tell me that while I was on the balcony. What'd they say? They said 
that Dr. Dudley already, already called this number. He doesn't want to be called out of the theater again. Oh, I'm getting a new doctor. I'm not putting my life on the line for some drama critic from Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, hello? This is Leonard Gans. Dr. Dudley did not call this number. Please have him call me back. It's important. What did Chris want? What did Ken want Chris upstairs for? To ask Ken's doctor to see what to do for his ears. Ken wouldn't be able to hear what was going on on the phone. Got to get back upstairs. Wait, you mean Chris told the doctor about the gun and then talked to explain about Charlie? No, no. She was going to say that he was outside in the manhole cover pull up next to him. That's a good idea. Except that the doctor wasn't in. His service said he was still at the theater. Must be some kind of flu going around on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> they purposely wait until they get on top of the stairs. <laughs> Answer that, will you? This is all too hard to follow. I need a bookmark in my head or something. Hello? Oh, Dr. Dudley, thanks for calling back. You want to talk to him? No, I'm taking a stress test. You know, if Ernie can't figure out something's wrong here, I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Dudley? Oh, thanks for calling back. You see, somebody nailed me in my BMW about 20 minutes ago. I've got a little whiplash here. Charlie? Charlie Brock? No, I wasn't calling about Charlie. Why? Oh, Jesus! Dr. Dudley's Charlie's doctor, too! Uh, no, no! Charlie's doing better! He's resting now! Chris Gorman! You know Ken and Chris! Oh, he's Ken's doctor, too! Maybe he has a franchise. <laughs> uh, no, no, yes, I think Chris did call Dr. Dudley. Uh, would you please hold on one moment? Put on some music or something, make yourself useful. What button rings in Charlie's room? Why? Who's gonna hear it up there? Jesus, you are a pain in the ass! <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Dudley. Yes, my wife has a pain, too. No, it's no bother. Please hold for Chris. We owe this guy a gift. Let's get a cookie as a patient. <laughs> See where Ernie is with my spritzer, will ya? Here you are, Len. I thought I heard Lenny in here. I have a spritzer. I'll take it for him. <laughs> <laughs> How's Cookie doing? Uh, not well. I gave her some aspirin for her back, but she dropped in the sauce. Good. Then we'll all get rid of our headaches. Did Lenny say what that sound was? You mean the gunshot? It was a gunshot! No, I was referring to the sound you thought was a gunshot. It wasn't a balloon, I know that. No, it was a can of shaving cream. It exploded! <laughs> Shaving cream exploded? It's okay, it washes off. Incredible. Bert, I need you to take out some garbage bags. I'm not through talking to my group yet. They're fighting with each other. I'll put them on hold. <laughs> Go lie down in the guest room for a while. Ken, you'll feel better. I think this will last long. No, Ken, go lie down in the guest room for a while. Maybe if I go lie down in the guest room for a while. <laughs> Right. What did the doctor say to Chris? He referred her to another doctor. He wasn't feeling well himself. God, my neck is killing me. See where Ernie is with my spritzer? Is your sister here? <laughs> no, Ken. My spritzer. Come on, I'll heat up your towel. Don't tell your sister about Charlie. Not till we hear the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem, Claire. Can you help me? Ernie went out the kitchen door and put out some garbage bags. The door locked and my hands are full of grease. Can you open the door for him? Of course. See what all this and tear it. <sighs> oh, I purposely went around so you wouldn't have to go to the door. Oh, hi. Where's Claire? She just went out in the kitchen to let Ernie back in. Oh, okay. Cookie, the pasta pulling over. Why didn't you turn it down? I don't know. I don't watch your show. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, bring me some bag of ice. I'm melting. I'm beginning to feel like one of my patients. <laughs> well, everything is just fine. It's fine. They're in the kitchen. God, I'd smoke a Havana cigar if I had one. I'm getting hives under my arms. Oh, and have you seen Ken? He's dead. He's better off. He's out of this thing now. Why are we protecting Charlie in this way? Ken's death, Lenny can't turn his neck, Cookie's walking like a giraffe, I'm getting a blood condition, and for what? One more gunshot, the whole world will know anyway. The whole world doesn't care. 
Paraguay and Bolivia don't give a rat's ass. There's another car coming up. Is anyone else invited? Harry and Jones, but they canceled. They went to Venezuela. But they said they'd call tonight. From Venezuela? Jeez, maybe they will hear about it in Bolivia. <laughs> and who's coming up the driveway? Maybe it's Mira. Maybe she's come back. Mira drives a Porsche. This is an Audi. Ask Ken. He might know. Ken is reading lips right now. I don't think you can pick up on Audi. <laughs> Jesus, what the hell was that? Cookie blew up the microwave. What else? Oh, Chris, go inside and see what happened. Claire, go to the window and see who's coming. I'm gonna go check on Charlie and Ken. Ah, I feel trap the Alamo! Oh, damn, I burned my fingers! Oh, hot, 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 hot! Oh, God, it's hot! Oh, dear. Ah, son of a gun, that hurts! Ah, damn it, out of hell! What happened? Cookie dropped dry bag and slipped against the stove. The hot flour was much fonder, so I lifted it up. Then I dropped on the table and broke the water pitcher and glass shattered on her arm. She's bleeding like hell. I got a dish towel on her wrist and prop dropped against the cabinet. But I need some bandages for her arm and some ointment for my fingers. I never saw anything happen so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he's in pain and said all that without missing a word. Get the bandages. Why are you just standing there? I was hoping there was more to the story. <laughs> I'm sorry, Claire. Did you ask for a drink? Listen, you have other things to think about. Right. Ah! You know what this night's beginning to remind me of? Platoon. <laughs> There's the car. I don't even want to know who it is. Why don't you go look? Like it's gonna be good news, right? It's Glenn and Cassie. Glenn and Cassie Cooper? Together? Well, that's how they're walking. I heard they were having trouble, not walking. Jesus, did you know that Glenn is running for state senate in Poughkeepsie? So? So, that's all he needs is to walk in here and be part of a hushed up suicide attempt. He can kiss his career goodbye. Maybe Ken will figure this all out before they ring the doorbell. Well, it's gonna be a tough campaign. Look, I have to go to the bathroom. You get the door and I'll be right out. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't gone to have gotten here. Yes, you did, in my Lee's room. Yes, but no one was at the door then. <laughs> oh, to hell with it. Someone else will get the door. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't anyone gonna get the door? Chris? Claire? Are you talking to me? No, Ken, put the towels back on your ears. Chris! Claire! Oh, screw it, I'm beginning to feel like my car! Glenny! <laughs> you got those bandages? <laughs> Oh, you look beautiful. It's my hair, isn't it? I saw you looking at it in the car. No, it wasn't. 
Then what were you looking at then? The road, I suppose. I can always tell when you hate what I'm wearing. I love that outfit. I always have. This is the first time I've worn it. I always have admired your taste, is what I meant. God, it's so hard to please you sometimes. What did I say? It's what you don't say that really drives me crazy. What I don't say? How can it drive you crazy if I don't say it? I don't know. It's the looks that you give me. I wasn't giving you many looks. You look at me all the time. Because you're always asking me to look at you. Well, it would be nice if I didn't have to ask, now wouldn't it? Oh, it would be nice if you didn't need me to look, which would make it unnecessary to ask. I can't ever get any support from you. You've got all the time in the world for everything and everyone else, but I gotta draw blood to get your attention when I walk in a room. We walked in the room together. <laughs> it was already done. <laughs> Cassie, please don't start. We're 45 minutes late as it is, and I don't want to ruin this night for Charlie and Mira. We're 45 minutes late because you scowled at every dress that I tried on. I didn't scowl. I smiled. You always think my smile looks like a scowl. You think my grin looks like a frown and my frown looks like a yawn. Don't sneer at me. It wasn't a sneer, it was a pee. God, this conversation <laughs> so banal. I can't believe any of the things I'm saying. We sound like some shitty TV couple. Oh, now we're going to get into language, right? No, Mr. Perfect. I won't get into any language. I don't want to risk a smile, a frown, a pee, or a sneer. God forbid I show a human imperfection. I'd wake up with the divorce papers in my hand. Where does that come from? What is this thing lately with divorce? I don't look at you sometimes because I'm afraid that you're thinking that you don't like the way that I'm looking at you. I don't know what the hell you want from me, Glenn. I really don't. <sighs> I don't want anything from you. I mean, I would like it to be the way we were before we got to be the way we are. God, you suffocate me sometimes. I want to go home. <laughs> go home? We just got here. We haven't even seen anyone yet. I don't know how I'm going to get through this night. They're your friends. Jesus. They all know what's going on. And you expect me to behave like nothing's happening? Nothing is happening. What are you talking about? Don't you dare lie to me. The whole damn city knows about you and your cheap little chippy bimbo. Would you keep it down? You're blowing this up out of all proportions. I hardly know the woman. She's on the Democratic Fundraising Committee, for God's sake. I met her and her husband at two cocktail parties. Two cocktail parties, huh? Yes, two cocktail parties. You think I'm stupid? No. You think I'm blind? No. You think I don't know what's going on? Yes, because you don't. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Glenn. Are you listening? Don't you see my ears breaking up? I've known about you <laughs> and Carol Newman for a year now. Amazing! Since I only met her four months ago. Now, Cassie, I'm asking you to please lower your voice. That butler must be listening to everything. You think I care about a butler and a bleeding cook? My friends know about your bimbo. What do I care about? Hire help! I don't know what's gotten into you, Cassie. Do my political ambitions bother you? Are you threatened somehow because I'm running for the Senate? State Senate. State Senate. Don't make it sound like we're going to Washington. We're going to Albany. 23 degrees below zero in the middle of winter, Albany. You're not Times Man is here yet, sweetheart. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What was that? Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> oh, like I'm behaving badly, right? I'm the true witch wife that's giving you such a hard time. Well, I'll tell you something, Mr. State Senator. I'm not the only one who knows what's been going on. People are talking, kiddo. Trust me. What do you mean? You haven't said anything to anyone, have you? Oh, is that what you're worried about? Your career? Your reputation? Your place in American history? Well, I'll tell you your place in American history. A commemorative stamp of you and the bimbo in a motel together. You are so hyper tonight, Cassie. You're out of control. You've been rubbing your quartz crystal again, haven't you? <laughs> Why don't you throw those damn crystals away? They're dangerous. They're like petrified cocaine. Don't take it out. Don't rub your crystal at the party. It makes you crazy. Put it away. Don't let my friends see what you're doing. Fine! Don't let my friends see what you're doing! Glenn! Cassie, I thought it was you. How you doing? I'm feeling better, thanks. Not you, Ken! It's Glenn and Cassie! Oh, we're fine. Just great. Hi, Glenn! Cassie! 
It's Len. Yes. Leonard. <laughs> Did it suddenly freeze up out there? Freeze up? Isn't that an icicle Cassie's got there? No, it's a quartz crystal. Oh, where's Chris and Claire? Did somebody come in? Yes, Ken! Glenn and Cassie, I told you! Sorry, it's Ken. His ears are all stuffed up. Bad cold. Who let you in? The butler did. The butler? The butler's here? He's getting us drinks. Oh, was anyone with him? The cook is. The cook's here too? Oh, thank God, what a relief. We didn't have any help here for a while. Really? Where's Charlie and Mira? I guess they're in their room. My towel fell off, Lenny! I'll get you another towel! I've got to get the bandages first! Excuse me, kids. I've got to get some bandages. Mira, can I come in? Sure, honey! Come on in! Lenny? Lenny, where'd you go? Ken? Hi, it's Lenny Cassie. Lenny? Lenny, is that you? Lenny! Glenn? Is that Glenn? Yes, and Cassie. I hear you have a cold. You think I look old? I haven't been sleeping well lately. Uh, hi, Cassie. Do the others know you're here? Yes, we just saw Lenny. Uh, have you seen Lenny? Yes, he went into Charlie's room. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. A manhole cover blew up next to my ear. That's terrible. I said, a manhole cover blew up next to my ear! Yes, I hear you! I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Has anyone got any drinks yet? Yes, the butler. I'm sorry, there's no help here. They're in the Orient somewhere. I think he's gone dotty. Yes, a hot toddy would be nice. I'm going up to see if they're all in Mira's room. We're, we're all coming down soon. Uh, Mira, mind if I come in? Sure, honey! <laughs> I'll be right back. Where are you going? Wash off my quartz crystal. I'm sure you'd like to make a quick phone call while I'm out, huh? Anyone in there? Who is it? Cassie, who's that? It's Prism. Just a minute, Cass. <laughs> And the butler and my lead. You saw my lead and the butler? My god, I must have been in there for a long time. <laughs> Are you through with the bathroom? Oh, me? Yes, sure. Who is it? Left it locked. <laughs> Who is it? Cassie, who's that? Oh, hi, Cass. It's Claire. Just a sec. <laughs> Lenny and Ken are up with Charlie and Mira. Mira sounded very excited. You spoke to Mira? No, I heard her speak to Ken and Len. I'd love to have a copy of that conversation. <laughs> Is anybody else in the bathroom? Because I've got to go. <laughs> Miley and the butler are here. Are you kidding? Where's Ernie and Cookie? I just met Ernie. Isn't he the butler? Oh, no. We've got that one cleared up. Then they're just back from the Orient. I imagine so. You're so well informed. What's everybody doing up in Charlie's room? Oh, there was something on the TV they all wanted to watch. Right. Very good, Chris. <laughs> well, this is beginning to look like a party. So you're watching up there. Up where? On TV. The thing you went up to watch with Charlie and Mira and Ken. Oh! Oh, that thing in that show, the, um, PBS special on what's-his-name. <laughs> Hitler! <laughs> <laughs> yes! That thing on Hitler! Ten wedding anniversary, you wanted to watch a special on Hitler? Hitler as a boy! A whole new slant on him! Dinner's coming along! Oh, uh, double scotch, straight up. Oh, thanks. Lenny, you got those bandages. Oh, yeah, sorry, I left them on Hitler. On the television! <laughs> I'll be right back. 
Hey, I'm sorry. I mistook you for the butler. Oh, I kind of thought you did. No, I'm an analyst. Oh, for Pete's sake. I'm glad. How's your wife? The duck is still frozen, but the scuddy's boiling. No, I meant her arm. Oh, not too bad. She's a trooper. Her fingers are cramping up a little. Maybe she should see a doctor. Charlie has one ten minutes in here. Um, Dr. Dudley? Oh, we called him. He's busy. Oh, you called about Cookie's arm? No, about Lenny's neck. Lenny's neck? And when the doctor called back, we told him about Ken's ears. Isn't that incredible? For a can of shaving cream exploding. I heard it was a manhole cover. <laughs> it was, but the pressure from the manhole cover made the shaving cream can explode. I didn't hear that. I got him! I got him! Certainly there's some excitement around here. Guess who Glenn's doctor is? You're kidding! I wish I did his taxes! Wait a minute! <laughs> the Glenn Cooper! From Poughkeepsie! You're running for the state senate! Oh, that's right! I have a good friend who knows you very well! Oh, yeah? Who's that? Harold Green! Harold Green? Harold Green. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know Harold Green! You know Harold Green! University of Pennsylvania together. I haven't seen him in years. What's he doing now? He's a rock bastard proxy social to the Bermuda Sea Sunshine and Spencer Omar! Oh. <laughs> Harold Green. That's your club? Ernie, Cookie's waiting in the emergency room. Right. There's your wife's Perrier. Nice to meet you, Glenn. Thought I wasn't a butler. <laughs> Somebody, please. I need a drink real bad. How's your beers, Ken? Yes, a beer would be fine, thanks. <laughs> Maybe Charlie has some eardrops. Did you see any in the medicine cabinet when you were getting the bandages? No, I didn't take it that. I'll go up and look. Uh, no! No, 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 I looked. There weren't any. I forgot I looked. <laughs> Is there a cat in here? A cat? <laughs> well, I swear, I just heard a cat in here. There it is again! That's the bone, Ken! A bone? Why would he want a bone if a cat not a dog? I got it! We're hungry too, pussy! We haven't eaten either! Hello? I I'm sorry, operator. We have a bad connection. Who? Oh, yes, it is! It's Harry and Joan from Venezuela. This is going to be good. Joan, that's Cassie's cousin. Here, wait a second. I'll get Cassie. She'll want to speak to her. Yes! Hi, Joni! Cassie! It's Lenny! How you doing? Oh, yes, we're doing fantastically. Yes, we're all having a great time. Charlie and Mira! Of course they're here, what you think? <laughs> Cassie, it's Joan. Yes, Joan! Oh, of course. One second, please. Speak to her! Me? She's calling Charlie and Mira! You speak to her! Don't you want to speak to Joan? <laughs> Joan, what a nice surprise! No, it's Claire. Oh, yes, a terrific party. Mira. Mira looks beautiful. She's wearing a red kimono. My Lee's mother sent it to her. Oh, I'll let you speak to her now. <laughs> Don't give me the phone. I'll drive your kids to school for a year. I've done my part. I'm not the Red Cross. Cassie, it's Harry and Joan. Don't you want to speak to them? <laughs> Joan, hi, sweetheart. Uh, how's Venezuela? <laughs> no, it's Chris. Oh, you sent a gift. A crystal vase from Steubens. Gee, I think that's broken. Cassie. Uh, hold on up. Mira will tell you about it. Are you all right? Who didn't speak to her? Ken, do you want to speak to Joan? What? Joan, do you want to speak to Joan? Sure, I'd love to go home. <laughs> Joan, I... <laughs> the connection's bad, I think we're losing you! Cassie, we're losing the connection! Come on, will you? <laughs> it's Gimden, everyone! Uh, Who did that? Who banged on the door? Ivan! Cousin Joan, she's calling from Venezuela. You scared the life out of me! You made me drop my crystal down the toilet! A <laughs> oh, one million year old crystal! Oh, I can't take this! Here, you can't hear anyway. What's the difference? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Just stand there, you idiot! Get my crystal! Hey, just cool it, Cassie, okay? <laughs> I'll go get the beer and Charlie. No, I'll get them, I'll get the beer and Charlie! Oh, 